We are about to shut down the one reactor in Canada that is making molybdenum-99 for medical purposes in 2015. There are hundreds of thousands of patients that will not be able to get their molybdenum-99 that they need for uh, uh, diagnostic procedures when that happens. We can make molybdenum-99 just a normal course of operation, and we can remove it very easily. There's four natural decay chains of alpha-emitting radioisotopes. One starts with U-238, U-235, thorium-232, and then there's one that's extinct because it has no long-lived precursors on it. It was there in the supernova billions of years ago. It's gone now. It's on the U-233 decay chain. There is a special product on there, bismuth-213, that could be a smart bomb against cancer. They attach the bismuth-213 to an antibody. Now that bismuth only has a half-life of 45 minutes, so it's very radioactive and it's going away quickly. But in that time, that antibody can go and find a cancer cell, the bismuth decays, an alpha particle goes through the cell and it kills the cancer cell. The radiation techniques we use in cancer therapy today, they're all based on beta-emitting isotopes, not on alpha-emitting isotopes. They have a big kill radius, they're not very directable. We, it's, it's, it's okay, but it's really not a smart bomb. Alpha emitting isotopes are really rare. It's hard to get them. It's hard to get the right kind, the right chemical one that will lock onto the right thing that's close enough to being stable that even after it decays, it doesn't just decay 10 more times in the body. Bismuth 213 is one decay away from being done. And it's especially good against dispersed cancers like leukemia, cancer of the blood. Not tumorous cancers where there's a big hard lump that you can go in and cut out with surgery. Stuff that's hard to get to, pancreatic cancer. You get pancreatic cancer, you're probably looking at a death sentence. You know, that's how bad it is. Here's the problem. Bismuth 213 is unique in this capability. And Bismuth 213 can only be generated from the decay of uranium-233. I, I, I sometimes even lay in bed thinking, you know, if my kid had leukemia, how hard would I be working on getting this therapy ready for them to save lives? And if it's that important, why aren't I going full bore on it right now? How much did it cost to build? What's your ballpark <laughs> figure? Like, is this Home Depot stuff? Or no. No. I think I think uh, I think a first unit, uh, which is probably going to be on the order of, you know, twenty thirty megawatts electric, is we're looking at several hundred million dollars to develop that. But then taking the step beyond that to a utility class scale reactor, probably another several hundred million dollars. I mean, you know, you're probably looking at a billion dollars to bring this up to utility class. But when you consider what it's going to do. That's really not all that much right now. A lot of it is the engineering, you know, and then the regulation is a huge question mark. It's actually not a lot of money, in a sense. I've learned it's not about the number, it's about the uncertainty on the number. You can go to a, an investment bank right now and you can say, I want to build an oil drilling platform and it's going to cost $12 billion. And they will write you a check for that because you can go and say, I've built 50 of these platforms before. You know, here's about where the price came out. It's going to go in this area, which is producing right now this much oil. It's going to be out here. It's going to take us this long to recover this much oil based on how we've done it the other 50 times. And then go, there's not a lot of uncertainty in doing this. You start by not making the full lifter, but yes. making like a little piece. Take some of these byproducts and you use that money, get that little first stage that starts making it. Are you sure we don't have the Ethernet jack plugged in the back of our heads? <laughs> <laughs>